Hey everybody, this is Peter with Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to take a look at an expansion for Vessen by Free League Publishing. Yes, Vessen have finally has its first expansion, and that is Mythic Britain and Ireland. I am super excited by this because I really enjoy Vessen. I think Vessen is a great game. Um, I've run it for the guys here on Tabletop Gaming Guild. Uh, you can find the video here on our channel where we played through a session of the game and we just had an awesome time. Everybody enjoyed themselves. Uh, so this is an exciting expansion because the original core book, Vessen, everything is taking place in an alternate Scandinavia of 19th century, and this book is going to all of a sudden move our players over to Mythic Britain and Ireland. So for those of us who live in the West, this might be somewhat of a more familiar territory. Uh, I know when I read the original Vessen book, Scandinavia was kind of a, a new area for me, a new locale to learn about, and I really enjoyed that, but it also made it a little harder for me to wrap my brain around, seeing as I didn't know that part of the world quite as well. Well, Mythic Britain in Ireland is bringing it a little bit closer to home for me, and so I, you know, I've visited some of these places before. I've been to London, I've been to Dublin. Uh, I can't wait to eventually visit Scotland, and so these are places that I've been to and I have seen in person, and so I was really excited when I found out that a game that I love so much, Vessen, is now moving to a land that I know a little bit better, making that maybe a little bit easier for myself as the GM running the game to wrap my head around and then also present it a little bit more realistically to my players. Um, so yeah, they, they kickstarted this book and it, it you know did fantastic on Kickstarter. And as of this month, August 2022, I know that some of the books have started to be received by the individuals who backed the game. And uh, so the game should be available for ordering soon on um, freeleaguepublishing.com. So if you're interested in playing Vessen for the first time, or you've played it and you're looking for new material to bring to your game, then Vessen Mythic Britain in Ireland is definitely going to be for you if you didn't jump in on the Kickstarter. We're going to go ahead and just kind of skim through this book real quick. We're mostly going to look at just the first three chapters because the final chapters of the book are three new mysteries for you as the GM to run for your players, and I don't want to give away any spoilers or anything. So let's go ahead and dive on in. First things first, I love the art for Vessen. It is beautiful. The great art that we had from the original book is back again with all new takes again for Britain and Ireland. Um, I love this opening image right here on the cover. I think it's gorgeous. Um, the, the red hair on the individual who is on the mystery, I think it just kind of pops right there at the center of the image. Um, and then we have this grizzly creature looming over her, uh, but she's ready. She's got her crucifix in one hand, her gun in the other. She's ready to go on this mystery uh, to exercise whatever creature is, is here at this tomb. Um, I, I just, I love the art and, uh, and the books that they put out for Vessen, the previous book um, and this expansion. I, I'm sure it's going to be just as beautiful as the original. It, it, they have a couple different uh, book styles at Free League Publishing. Some of them are not kind of nice and smooth. Some of them are kind of older. They kind of have an older antique feel to them, and that is the Vessen books, and I love that feel uh, to the cover and also to the individual pages. They did the same thing with the One Ring 2nd Edition. Um, it's my personal favorite style that they do their books in. It's kind of a, a lighter weight material and um, and it just has a great look and feel to it. So I'm looking forward to getting this in person. This obviously is the PDF. So uh, we have our title page where we have the information about the writers as well as the artists and everybody else in between who worked on this title. Our table of contents here lets us know that we are going to have the first chapter all about Mythic Britain and Ireland, letting us know about the locales and the people 
uh, of that area of the world, as well as then chapter two is all about the society. And so in the core rulebook for Vesson, we did get information about the society in Scandinavia. Now we're getting information about the society as it, you know, as it persists here in England and Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Uh, chapter three is supernatural creatures, so we're getting a whole bunch of new creatures to add to the game. Again, with Vesson, it's it's a supernatural game about supernatural creatures, and in Scandinavia, we got introduced to a whole slew of creatures that some of them we may have heard of, a lot of them we had not heard of, at least myself. Uh, now that we're going to Mythic Britain, Ireland, I'm seeing a lot of more creatures that I do recognize. Uh, the Banshee, the Black Dog, the Bogarts. But there's also creatures here. I'm like, I've never heard of these. And so I'm getting to know a little bit more about the lore of an area of the world that I thought I knew. And I'm finding out there are things I didn't know. And that's always a good time. I love gaining more knowledge. Uh, the book opens with a preface from the author. Um, and then, like I said, the, the last three chapters there are specifically mysteries that you can run for your group uh, playing the game. And so we're not going to get into those, but they're there. just wanted to make sure that you're aware of it. Also, handouts at the end, too. So we open with chapter one, all about Mythic Britain and Ireland. We get this great map here on uh, the, the first page right before the chapter begins. I'm going to change my view real quick just pull in a single page so you can see this piece of art i love the i love that they went with kind of an older map style because again this is a game that's kind of taking place earlier in history it's not a today game it's earlier in the history so usually it's kind of roughly victorian era uh, late 18th century early 19th century and so i love this beautiful map i would i would actually love to have this full on just up on my wall uh, maybe a cloth map. I think it's fantastic. Um, I love all the the edges that they did and the art for the creatures in the ocean. So everything just looks and feels very much like an antique map that you might see of the world. Um, but I think it's beautiful. And then I love the very bottom, the, the focus in on just London itself and kind of what London is looking like from the river. I think is a great touch. So, go back to our two-page view. Uh, so, yeah, so we're going to go through Chapter 1 here real fast. Uh, you, you know, Mythic Britain and Ireland, broken down into the four key nations. Uh, we've got England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. We get a little bit of information about each of these locales uh, and some of the, you know, the history and the history of fantasy in that area. Um, and then we get some information about conflicts in society, in the society that uh, exists at this time period. Um, there's information on the currencies, the, the old ways versus the new ways, lots of great information there to bring this area of the world and this time period alive for your group. Now we get a very close in look on city life. They give us some information about the social classes, uh, the working class and the nobility, and kind of how they would interact with one another during this time period. And so all of this is just gonna help the games master understand more of what it is that they need to bring the world to life. Um, there is information here about human monsters on this page as well, specifically mentioning some of the serial killers who maybe would have been alive and at work during this time. Uh, if you know uh, Sweeney Todd and then also uh, Jack the Ripper. Then we get into some of the more specific locales, the, the cities around this, this gigantic island and, and conglomeration of islands. Uh, we've got London. Talk a little bit about that. Edinburgh up in Scotland and Glasgow, uh, Liverpool and Manchester, Dublin, Belfast, Cardiff, and each one of these locales, we get these little this little box of like a specific location within that city that could tie into probably a mystery or one of your sessions. So they're giving you a little bit of information about the location, but then also trying to give you a little bit of inspiration for running your game with some of these little tidbits about each of the locations, which I think is fantastic. It's one thing just to know about the location, 
but another to know about a specific place or instance in that location that you could really draw that inspiration from. They do give us a little information about uh, London, so a little bit of the city life as well as some the, of the rural life. Uh, they give us information here on the Tower of London, uh, St. Paul's Cathedral, the Houses of Parliament, Westminster Abbey, and so they're bringing the city of London to life uh, so that you can, again, describe it to your players so that you can just totally immerse yourselves in the city of London. Information for the British Museum, Scotland Yard, Highgate Cemetery, and I love this. Again, I've been to some of these places, and as I'm reading the descriptions, I'm remembering uh, the images that I have of when I was there, the pictures I took, the places I saw, and the people that I met. Uh, Hyde Park is beautiful. I loved Hyde Park. And so all of this is just making me more and more excited to continue running Vessen now in a location that I, I personally know a little bit better. The London Zoo. And again, many information here, each place, that little teeny box is going to give you even more ideas for growing your game. And then we get this great image here, this double spread image of a plan of London and so you can see the streets and the street names you can see some of the important locations have been uh, identified and so you can see Hyde Park over to the left uh, I just I, I just I love London I enjoyed my time there and so the idea of setting a mystery right here in the heart of the city uh, I think is very exciting they give us some information here about different types of non-player characters that could be in the city and it does take time to mention here that all of the NPC types that were mentioned in the core rulebook of Vessen are definitely um, possibly presented in they could be in this game as well but then they wanted to give us some new types as well added here to the game so they stat them out, give you the information that you would need for running one of those NPCs in your game. This, I think, was a great addition. Celebrity encounters. Who are some of the people, either from history or from fiction, who might have lived in this area of the world who could show up in your game? And so we get the name of the individual and a little paragraph about that person. And, uh, you know, that giving you, again, that inspiration to add them into your game. And so we have the Reverend Charles Lud Ludwig Dodgson, which most of us probably know better as Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice in Wonderland. There's some information there, the dates that he lived, uh, was born and died. Uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes, Jack the Ripper, Dr. Henry Jekyll from Jekyll and Hyde, Florence Nightingale, Ada Lovelace, so many great people, again, from true history. So if you, if these are one of like historical persons, you could go outside of this book and look them up, find out more information about them and the things that they uh, took part in. Or if they're a fictional character, maybe you go off and you read some Sherlock Holmes to give yourself a little bit of an idea, again, of how Sherlock Holmes could play into this. Watch some of the shows or the movies. Just a really great idea to pull some of these characters uh, whether historical or fiction, into your game world. So there's a whole bunch of those. And then also societies and groups that you could pull from for your game. So they've got the Freemasons, the Royal Society of London for Improving Natural Knowledge, uh, the Society of for Psych... Yeah, the Society for Psychical Research. So a lot of really good stuff there. And then they're not done yet. Again, I just have to point out the art because, oh my gosh, if there is not a piece of art in this book that's going to creep you out any more than this one. Ah, I love the art. It's fantastic and it's horrifying. That image right there. So if you're looking for some inspirational art to even have in your game to show to your players, Here's, here's a great piece for you to possibly use if it ties into your session. So, beautiful art in this, in this book, as always, from Freely Publishing. Um, mysterious places, they have some sp very specific places listed here um, throughout England and Scotland and Wales and Ireland. 
and then they even get into parallel worlds, which I think is really interesting because in Vessen so far, we've not really talked about doing much crossing over into other worlds, not that I can remember anyways. It was mostly grounded in the here and now, even though supernatural events are happening. But specifically now, they're pointing out uh, from lore and from folklore and mythology from this area of the world, places that are mentioned as being just on the other side of the veil. And so they've got Anvin for the, the Welsh folklore, Tirnanog for uh, the Irish folklore, uh, and Sith, I think, is one of the ways to pronounce it in the Scottish, Scottish Gaelic uh, for another location. And then they give you a paragraph about, you know, walking between worlds. Who are the people, you know, the people with the sight, those of you who are playing in the game and going on the mysteries, you would be able to see the, the doors and the ways into these other pa parallel worlds. And so you could possibly even start bringing in the traveling between worlds with your players. Um, it doesn't go into a whole lot more information other than just giving you some ideas but I think it would be a lot of fun and very interesting to play into that crossing over into other worlds. Um, and, and speaking real quick, uh, one of the books that I think, if you're looking for a fictional book that's going to give you a feel for this area of the world and the supernatural, if you've not read um, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell uh, by Susanna Clarke, I would highly recommend it. If you're thinking about running a game of Vessen uh, and you want to dive into some fiction all about the supernatural and this area of the world, it is an alternative Napoleonic War era um, fantasy and it is beautiful. If you don't have time to read it before your session, because it is a thick book, uh, the BBC did do a, a mini-series based on it that you could probably get your hands on either online uh, through your local library, uh, but that would be one work of fiction that I would highly recommend diving into. Uh, that's a quick aside that I just wanted to throw in there as I was thinking about it. So more information about the parallel worlds and the fey places in the world and how the crossing over between them could possibly take place. Uh, information on the wild hunt, so many good things. All of that, just chapter one. Tons of great information on the locations that your players will possibly be uh, going on their mysteries and uh, really good information for you to bring it to life. Now the second chapter dives into the society again. This is the group that your players are a part of. The society goes out and investigates all of the supernatural things happening, taking place in this area of the world, and it is their job. They have they have the sight. They can see these creatures that are wreaking havoc, uh, causing trouble in the world, and they're there to try to appease them, to, to mollify them, possibly to destroy them. Um, but again, Vesson is a game where when you go up against these creatures, death is on the line and it's not an easy thing. So really, it's not so much about that straight up head-to-head -head conflict. It's about, it's about figuring out the mystery, solving the mystery and figuring out a way to, to end the threat, usually, hopefully, without that face-to-face -face combat that is uh, known for in a lot of role-playing games. But there's information here about the society here in Mythic Britain and Ireland. Um, and so there's information about the society members who, who would have started the society here in this location. Oh, again, I just, I can't help it. I got to pull it up real quick. Another fantastic piece of art here. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I love it. Okay. All right. Diving back into two page mode here. Um, so it gives you some of the, the information about how the society operates here in the area, where their, um, where their location is, where their headquarters is. It gives you information about Row's house. Um, and so you could utilize that as your player character's headquarters while they're playing this game. So they're going to give you information about that. 
and uh, the people who live there specifically, they're going to give you information here about Hawkins, who is the butler of Rose House. And uh, you're going to find out all of that as you read through here. And then we get new archetypes. So archetypes are the classes that our players can play as, and we have some new archetypes specifically for this game. Now, of course, you could use the archetypes from the core rulebook as well, um, but like any good expansion, they're giving you some uh, options now also, and that is the athlete, the entertainer, and the socialite. So just three of them there, the entertainer, socialite, and athlete. Again, really cool, fun pieces of art here, little caricature pieces of art for each of these classes. Um, really, really well done, as always. And then we get into chapter three. This is gonna be the last chapter that we dive into in this video. Um, and it is for, for everyone, probably, I don't know, my favorite, I love getting to meet the supernatural creatures that are causing trouble in the world. And so we're gonna dive into that now as well. Um, we get some information about creatures and how they work, but then we get uh, these two page spreads for each of the creatures um, that are new in this book. We've get the Banshee, the Black Dog, the Bogart, the Dullahan, which looks like a, a headless horseman of some kind here. We get the Glastig, the Hag, the Knocker, which I like this piece of art a lot. It reminds me a lot of the art uh, by Tony Ditcherlizzi. Um, and it's just, it, so it's got, I got a little nostalgia there because I love his art. Um, and it looks like something that would have been in some of his books and some of his art for uh, other role-playing games as well. But I think it's it's really, really cool. Uh, and I want to run this creature. I want the players to meet this creature. Uh, it looks like it would probably cause a lot of uh, conflict. Uh, the Leprechaun and the Nukalevi. Nuk I, I don't know. I'm saying that wrong. I know it. And oh my gosh, Nightmare Fuel. This uh, half, I mean, it looks kind of like a, a Cyclops centaur that's dead? I don't know. Uh, a Cyclops centaur that is also dead. It's freaky. Um, the Pixies and the Puka. The Puka is just a really cool piece of art. Might be one of my favorite piece, one of my favorite uh, creature pieces of art, but it's, it's up against a whole lot of really good ones. Um, I like this one a lot too. I just think it's really well done. The, just the whole thing, the horns, the, the hooves, the feather, the, the fur, all of it. Really, really well done. We get the red cap and the selkies. Uh, you know, they could go back and forth between uh, ladies and seals. And if you've ever seen the Secrets, Secrets of Roan Inish, a really good movie uh, from years ago, you could go into that for some information on the Selkies. And then they have this kind of wrap up portion for this chapter where you can take some of the Vessen that were in the was in the core rule book uh, and bring them over into this area of the world because they would have uh, uh, creatures in this area of the world that are much like them. And so in the original book, we had the Brook Horse uh, or the Water Horse. And so here, we have a couple different uh, creatures from this area of the world that are like the brook horse. So the Kelpies uh, in Scotland, or the Nuggles uh, over in uh, you know, kind of like the Shetland Pony area, the Shetland Islands. So we have that for the brook horse. There's also obviously mermaids. Mermaids, if there's water, there's mermaids. They, they're everywhere. Um, and so they have each of these have. Uh, again, the creature that was in the existing core rulebook and are now being brought over into this one with some specific uh, existences of them from this area of the world. And I think that's great. Now, that is it. That is the first 83 pages of the book, and it is a lot of great information, beautifully laid out, wonderfully arted. Um, and I'm not even getting into the second half of the book because the second half of the book is three mysteries 
that you as the GM uh, can run for your players. And I'm looking forward to diving into those and hopefully running another session of Vessen for my players here at Tabletop Gaming Guild, uh, bringing this book uh, with the mythic Britain and Ireland to life. Uh, everybody, I just I think this is a wonderful addition to Vessen, and I can't wait to see where else they decide to take the Vessen game to. Uh, what other areas of the world will they tackle next? Uh, because I, I one I love it for the gaining of knowledge. I love that I get to learn about creatures and folklore and mythology about different areas of the world while running. Uh, a very cohesive game based around these mysteries and these supernatural events. And so we've got Mythic Britain and Ireland. We obviously got Scandinavia. Where would you like to see Vessen go next? I have some ideas of where I would like it to go, but I'm going to wait to hopefully hear from you in the comments. What area of the world will you hope Free League takes the game of Vessen next? Everybody, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that this uh, enticed you and made you want to pick up Vessen Mythic Britain and Ireland. I cannot wait to get the physical book in my hand. Um, it's just incredibly exciting when you see a game that you love continue to grow. Um, and Free League Publishing continues to knock it out of the park. So head on over to FreeLeaguePublishing.com. Check out all their games. They've got a ton of them and they're all great. Um, and then also, you know, if you like the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Check out all of the other videos that we're doing here at Tabletop Gaming Guild. And until we talk again, everybody, keep on playing games.